Well, good morning, everybody. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome back to another day in my 2020 beekeeping season, where I'm taking you all the way from winter through to the next fall here in my small operation in southeast Louisiana. And remember, it's not a how-to video. It's just me documenting my season a day at a time. But if you happen to pick up any tips and tricks, that's great. And if you have any tips and tricks for me, leave them in the comment section. Well, it's the 27th of March. I need to start, I need to start letting you guys know the date. Because my videos are playing about a week behind. So it's the 27th of March. What am I going to do today? Today, I want to zip out there. I got about four hives to look for queens. I'm going to go through them extensively, but I'm not going to put it all in the video. Check, see if I got new queens, eggs, whatever. Then I'll know my splits are successful. I got to throw another deep on one other hive that I decided... I didn't realize what was going on with it when I went out there. It was a walkaway split. She should be already mating already, so I'm going to put a box on there. And then I've got uh, one hive I didn't even pop the top on yesterday. I do want to look inside there because it should be a thriving queen hive. So it may need a super. Um, so that's it. That's what I'm going to do today. Look, the temperature is already showing just shy of 80 degrees. It's 10 o'clock in the morning, but there's a good breeze out and there's some clouds coming. It's... It's getting ready to be hot in Southeast Louisiana, folks. Let's get rolling. All right, guys, first stop, hive one. Now, it's still a little early on the queen, but I'm gonna check. I always start at my four week mark. Cause I have had queens that are right on, right starting. This hive is it's pretty small, but that's going to happen. You're going to dwindle with, make, with allowing them to make their own queens. You lose brood for quite a while. Now, there is one significant thing about losing that brood. And I don't know if y'all have read much about it. I used to see a lot about it. And I know a particular operation that does it uh, exclusively is brood breaks. And these brood breaks actually help with mites. Because there's no brood to lay in. So, very low on bee numbers, but I'm not in the cluster yet. This seems to be the cluster right here. Yeah. There's where there was an old cell. You can see there was an old cell right there. This hive ended up having, I said it only had one or two, but it ended up having like three or four. I'd missed them. This is that from that video. Um, they had cells. Okay, See, and, and here they got a spot. This is ideal. It's rainbow of nectar mm -hmm. and an open spot of polished cells. So it's like they know she's here and waiting. And heck, I, they may be eggs and I hadn't looked yet, but it's like they know. They know what to preserve for her. And, and see, they're not roaring real loud, they're not super flighty. And the same on this side, a little polished area with a rainbow of honey. And that rainbow of honey, man, that's ideal. Well, look at there. Well, you can't look at there, but I got eggs. So I'm happy. I have a mated queen. So she made, they made a queen. So this was a success, this was a successful flip, split. The other half is out on my other yard. Yep, and that's why it's all pot. There she is, I think. Yep, there she is. I've seen her before. I got even got up. So that's our brand new queen. Yeah, man, good stuff. Successful split. And th these are days I go. Ah, making our own queens ain't so bad. All right, time to move on. All right, we're at number six. This is one of my early, early splits. All the other early splits made it. This one didn't far as a queen. This one I think is where we had a swarm of the virgin. Our very first tiny swarm, I'm pretty confident this was it. So we had found an emergency cell on the next set of splits and put in here. But uh, we're gonna see if this one made a queen from that cell. It's, it's probably about this, it should be the same time as the others because I put a cell that I found in the four, in those splits four weeks ago, so. 
Very small still, but more compact now. I like that, very compact. I'm gonna pick y'all up. Just show you how compact it is. See, before it was everywhere, everywhere, bees everywhere. They're still, they still don't like you rubbing across there. But, oh, we do have a queen, look at there. I'm sitting there saying we don't have a queen. There she is. I'm gonna put her back in before she flies away. But she's laying eggs. Just saw eggs, so we're good. It's a good one. We're successful. Number six is successful now. So two hives we queen. Well folks, this hive is a hive that is, uh, still needs to be checked for queen. Yeah, you see how it's, it's a nice rainbow of honey. I'm not seeing her though. It's going back with nectar. Not seeing any eggs, guys. But I mean, the cells are polished. All right, so. We don't have a laying queen in here yet. So we're two for three so far. Well, we got a good amount of bees, so they obviously had a lot of brood when we left them. Give me another week, see what happens. Um, push comes to shove. I've got number six down at the end. I'll combine them. But so far, our queenlessness is declining where we want it. We got this one as queen, so that's about three. I got one more to check through. So basically, if this thing stays queenless, uh, I'll put it in number six right next door. We'll combine them. We got a good lane queen in there. We're good to go. No problem. All right, we're moving on. Got a, Ooh, got to look at that mean one. I'm doing that last. I'm going to cut y'all off, do a couple other things, and we'll come back. Hey guys, I want to show you something on this one hive that I got. This is number 13. It's nice and full. I believe it needs a super at this point. There's no swarm cells or anything. So we got a good strong hive. This was a split with the queen. She's doing great. And I told you I don't use excluders. Well, here's what I do. When I don't use excluders, I look to see if there's a rainbow of honey on top. If they've got that rainbow of honey, that's my excluder. Does she come across that every now and again? If it's thin or not, or what have you, she'll, she might come across it. But nine out of 10 times, I've, had, I've not had that problem. So one thing I look for when I'm ready to super up is if I've got that rainbow of honey, then I put it down. Now you saw me use excluders on some of these other hives and that's because we're so early that I have, uh, I have full hives. I'm gonna give them space so they don't swarm because it's early. So I put excluders on as an experiment. In the past, I would have just put a super on there anyway, regardless of the rainbow of honey. And I just had brood in there. The only problem with brood in the super 
It doesn't bother me. It doesn't do anything to the honey. It doesn't do anything. The brood goes in, they emerge out, they backfill it. But sometimes that queen will continue to utilize that super. Like she'll stay up in the top two and that happens. That's happened a couple times. Another thing is when I store my supers, and I got a comment the other day about, y'all see my supers behind me. I, uh, I store them outside and vertically like that so the frames ride up and down. If I stored them on their side, the frames would all flop. And I store them so that light can come through them. And the wax moths don't mess with them. And I leave them there all winter long into the spring. And I pull supers by September 1st, all my supers are off. The problem is when I put brood ones in there, it, they, the moths go after those. And they don't, they don't get them all, but they get 40-50% of them will get hit by moths. So I don't like the brood in there, so I try to prevent it. I look for that rainbow but sometimes I can't so this year I'm experimenting a little bit with um, putting excluders on early with supers giving them time to move up they've been going up in them and they're cleaning them and I'm starting to get nervous because that's what I've done in the past and it's a timing thing with me I guess I just time it wrong but it's as though the bees have treated that as a ceiling and they haven't went above it and I'm talking withdrawn or with foundation Foundation and there's no flow. They're definitely not gonna go above it, but I was new when I did that If I tried it with drawn comb and the flow was beginning and they still bolted uh, But this year with the early growth I went ahead and tried excluders this one it's looking like it's got a good rainbow I'm gonna put it on without an excluder. It's a booming hive with no swarm cells and uh, I don't want to lose it And we are getting ready to see some privet, so if it blooms good, but hopefully it does. All right, I'm gonna get back over here and do this. So let's take a look. I didn't open this one yesterday. I don't know why I didn't. I skipped right over it. Maybe I popped the top, I don't even remember. Sometimes I just lose track. So what I wanna look at here real quick. Ooh, see, they're drawn, they're ready for a super. I'm gonna give them one with foundation. I'm trying to show you what I'm talking about. But yeah, see, there's all, there's nectar. Let me pull this up a little bit. We got nectar all the way through on the tops. And as that starts getting capped, normally the queen just, she doesn't cross it. She goes back below. Wow, look at this queen. Boy, isn't that, wonder why I don't want this one to swarm. Whew, that's nice. So, so what I'm seeing, let's not even pull them out. Let's just look. See, I got honey, I can see. This, one's, this one might be dry. Yeah, see, there's nectar. Very little right here. But that'll usually keep her below. But I'm putting foundation on anyway, so it shouldn't matter. And they seem to be drawing it out. I'm going to watch it carefully. I'll go in a week later and see if they're pulling anything out on that super. And it's good heavy waxed foundation. If they are pulling something out, then we're in business. All right, folks, save the best for last. I'm pouring the smoke to these things. Underneath, in the front. This is 17. I want to see if I got a new queen in the bottom. Pull the whole top off, not even going to open the top. They're loud, but they also got a ton of smoke. So let's see what's inside. I'm gonna leave y'all at a distance. Maybe to lay off the camera a little bit. Combine this later. See if I got a new queen. Kinda don't want one, I do and I don't. Cause I know once I get one, I gotta go through that one again to find her. I gotta kill her. And then recombine them. And hope that this new queen got a hold of some decent drones. All right, so I'm sorry about the smoke. It's coming in y'all's face, but um, there's emerged emergency cells. Now what I got flying around me right now, which you can't see in the camera, I don't think. That's the bees trying to come back to this back entrance. More emerged cells. What I don't want to do is combine them with that top until I get that queen located and again she might have swarmed who knows 
They're actually pretty calm. I'm actually pleasantly surprised. All right. We got a new queen. That's good news. I got eggs. Awesome. With three or four on uh, these last few splits. Definitely happy about that. So I got a good queen in the bottom. All right, so this, this bottom hive is much nicer. Um, I got bees on my face, but I think that's from that entrance we're trying to get back. This is nothing compared to yesterday. All right, folks, so here's the good news. All right, went through four hives to check for queens and had one that didn't have uh, a queen. Give them another week. Doesn't look promising, but um, we'll give them another week. It, sometimes it's just a day or two off. We could have missed her by the day. She might, be start, she might start laying tomorrow. We didn't just didn't see her. But that's good news. So I'm counting the... And look, here's the best news is 17 made a queen in the bottom. And 17, not that that queen is the reason they weren't bad, but that bottom section was not bad. Here's why that can be a, a significant development. They went without brood now. They're sitting on, well, they merged brood, so ooh, give them at least two weeks. Two weeks, they'll have two to three weeks of no brood. That's a brood, good brood break. A lot of those bees have either died off coming out of winter, Worked themselves off, whatever. They weren't near as mean. They weren't even hardly aggressive at all. I suspect most of the bees around my head, and look, they didn't follow me out here like they did. I think most of those bees around my head were from that hive returning to that back entrance where I was working. Because um, they're gone now. Put the lid on and all as well. So I didn't open that top hive. And that top hive is ruthless. Y'all saw it yesterday. So we got a new queen. We got a lot of new nurse bees and new field bees. We've got a, a different bit we still got some remnant of the old but we have a new queen and there were eggs in every cell when I looked in that open one so I moved some other frames in the middle that had open cells I want to get her moving and see what she does so we're on track we have a queen in the bottom the top one can go at any time now now we need to know if we got a queen in either that nuke or that top box I don't want to go in that top box I'm not afraid I just don't want to maybe I'm a little bit afraid no I'm not afraid I know this when I wear these thin pants, it's painful. I gotta go in there. I'm gonna have to go in there and look. We gotta get rid of that queen. And look, this one's not finalized yet. I don't know that they're not terribly mean. I did pour a lot of smoke to them, but we're gonna find out. We'll know soon enough. I'm just debating whether I wanna go in that hive because I'm done for the day. I've gotten everything done. So, all right, I'll let you know. I probably won't take you along with me on that. But you can't hear nothing. It's aggravating with them bees all around the camera, so. Probably just gonna go do that and I'll brief y'all on that later. All right, guys. I'm gonna go sit here and contemplate and start picking up my junk. Good day. Three out of four on Queens. I like that. Ooh, well, folks. Do I look tired? I'm tired. I wasn't tired until I had to fool with that, uh, that mean hive. And uh, that's because I got in a rush out there. I wanted to get it done quick. Uh. Yeah, you think we don't need to do something with this eye? Um, so, what I did today, and I'm going to go through what I did first. We're going to summarize what we did. Real quick, I went out and checked four boxes for queens. At the four-week mark on all of them, well, tomorrow's the four-week. And uh, I didn't do it yesterday. I don't know what I was thinking, but I'm glad I didn't. That was too long of a day anyway. But out of four, I had three with queens. I'll give one one more week and then I'll have to combine it. No problem, I'll combine it with the new queen right next door. Boom. Problem solved, still have two nukes with spare queens. Okay, I went to number 22 and went ahead and put a deep on there. 
Um, even though they're in the process of requeening, she should be mating any time. So next week will be her fourth week to check. And then um, I put a super on number 13, which I didn't look at yesterday. That thing is booming. I showed you all that. Got a nice uh, amount of honey on top. So I put foundation on there. Um, but I could have put drawn on there. I don't think the queen would have went in it. But nonetheless, I need some drawn, some new fresh drawn comb for honeycomb. So got all that done and went and found that queen in 17. Man, that's great. Happy about that. So I got a queen, she was loading the eggs up, and the hive wasn't that mean. Looked in four hives for queens, found three of them with queens and eggs. Got to see one of them, maybe two, I don't remember. And uh, only one didn't have a queen, give them one more week. And see what they do, and if they still don't have a queen, I'll just combine them next door. And we've got a hive that's ready to go in the honey production. So it all works out, it all works out. So guys, look, I hope you enjoyed the video, I'm glad you could come along with me. And uh, do a quick inspection. I hope it's not getting too boring for you. I know it's the same thing over and over, but uh, it's just it should start changing soon. Pretty soon we should start stacking boxes and getting ready for the honey flow uh, or the nectar flow, whatever you want to call it. But look, if you like the video, I sure appreciate you giving it a big thumbs up. And um, don't forget to subscribe. Man, subscribing doesn't cost you anything. And if you hit the notification bell, you know every time I get ready to upload one. And share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with just anybody that enjoys watching bees. And I really appreciate everybody that's been watching. I appreciate all your comments. I appreciate y'all sticking by through the series. Man, it's been a blast. Uh, kind of having fun just instead of being here by myself doing it. I got other people watching me do it. So it's pretty neat. Look, I appreciate it again. And this is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike. And I do bees. Y'all have a great afternoon. And God bless y'all.